Hello, I'm, uh, I'm Andy uh, and I volunteer with Great Minds Together um, and I'm going to support and talk about emotional regulation, um, about zones of regulation, um, which is um, a tool, a system for trying to help young people better understand their own emotions and more importantly to give them the uh, a toolbox of skills to to self-manage and self to recognize and self-manage uh, their own emotional state it's about not the teacher or adult doing it to them or for them but about teaching them to do it for themselves um it's not rocket science what i'm going to talk about i mean a lot of this will be very familiar to you but as with rocket science, there's a bit more to it than just pointing at the moon and doing a countdown. It's, it's easier, easier said than done. So we're going to start off by just looking at the following areas. So this is about those people we live with, um, those people we might work with, um, how we can help them to better understand the emotional state. And we're going to talk a little bit about trying to understand behaviour and the reasons behind the behaviour. You need to have that knowledge and understanding or you can decide what you can do to support somebody. We'll talk about how self-regulation is really normal human behavior. Um, we all do it. Um, introduction to zones of regulation, it's only an introduction. It's a, it's a whole curriculum in, in its own right. Uh, we'll touch on sensory issues, which are more to the fore now as they should be, but again, that's, that's a large subject. So we'll just be um, introducing one or two things about sensory issues. And then at the end, I'll call it top tips. That's a bit of a grand title for it. Just a few common sense things you can do to help uh, support somebody who, who is finding um, it difficult to self-regulate, um, how you can best support somebody in, in such a situation. So behavior, if we see behavior as a form of communication, um, a means of trying to get a, a often unidentified need met, uh, that's, that's a good starting point. Um, my experience of supporting young people, autistic young people, uh, people with social, emotional, mental health um, needs, they, they don't always use the most socially appropriate way um, of trying to get a need or express an opinion met. Um, so it's our job uh, to try and teach them a better way. Um, punching someone is a very powerful communicative tool. It means adults suddenly spring into action and try and come up with a solution or second guess what it is that that young person is trying to tell them. Um, but it's understanding the reasons behind that um, behaviour, what it is that people are trying to communicate. And that, that can be quite difficult. Imagine, if you may, a scenario, a year six teacher um, in a primary school, it's summer term, it's the class from hell, the wild year six class. Um, she goes into the staff room, stomps in, smashes the door up and throws her book on the floor. I can't do this, this is dead mad. I, I can't do this anymore, kicks a chair. Um, her colleagues might well, I hope, her arm around a cup and sit down. Oh, how are you? That's terrible. Have a biscuit. Have a cake. Don't come and see. Sit down. Have a rest. Um, but if a young person, a year six child, and we don't know what's happened to them before, before they got to school, last week, um, lunchtime, they might go into a class and behave similarly, kick the door and bang, and they might well get dealt with in a different manner. Um, the point being, it's important to try and understand the reasons behind a behaviour before being able to uh, come up with a way of supporting it. Self-regulation, we all do it. Uh, you see youngsters standing on tiptoes. Um, you might be in a business meeting or a works meeting and you'll sit on your chair, stretching your legs and flexing your muscles and moving around and even rocking on your chair. But as an adult, that's probably socially acceptable, but if you're that year six child, you might be viewed uh, in, in a different light, but we are just all self-regulating our emotional state. Um, you think of a football match, people go to a match and the goal goes in and everyone jumps up in the air and they're shouting and punching the air and jumping about in a socially acceptable way of emotionally regulating. A young autistic person, however, might be flapping and self-stimming and it's not unusual to hear that person being told they need to stop doing that and put your hands down and yet all they're doing is um, emotionally self-regulating. 
um, how you do it yourself. I don't know whether you're a nail biter. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a neck rubber. Um, we all have nerves, our cranial nerves here. You'll see people leaning on the chin and that, that's what they're doing. Um, they're emotionally regulated. Perfectly normal human behavior. So zones of regulation. This is the um, official site, as it were. You can have a look online, Google zones of regulation, loads of stuff there. Um, you can put, have all this stuff on an iPad or similar sort of device. You can get that on zones of regulation or at the Apple store. It's, it's not expensive, 5 99 And it is a toolkit um, where you are putting yourself into one of these zones as to how you feel. But more importantly, and we'll come to this in a while, giving you the tools to move between zones. With the aim being to get into zone, green, green zone. That's the place you want to be. That's when you're relaxed, you're on the ball, you're chilling, you're calm, you're happy. You know, life's a beach in the green zone. So that's where you want to be. But life being what it is, um, you will find yourself at times in other zones. And the aim behind zones of regulation is how you get yourself back to green. So we'll look at that in, in a little while. Um, some of the resources or the resources I've got come from a mainstream uh, special school, sorry. And there's different ways of doing this. This is one way they do it. So in the morning yeah, or after morning break or after dinner time or whenever, all the youngsters will be asked to discuss how they're feeling and to put themselves in one of the zones, whether in the green, yellow, blue or red zone. And that forms part of the curriculum to discuss how they're feeling, what's got them there, what they can do about it, with a view to getting back into, into green. Um, and as I said, there's a whole curriculum behind this. It has to be individualised, it has to be differentiated. It depends on the cognitive level of the person you're working with, whether this is one for young people who don't have a lot of um, verbal skills. Um, but, you know, it, it can quite easily be differentiated to, to meet a range of needs based on you knowing that person you're supporting or, or living with. Um, that's, a, that's a group example. There are individual examples. Um, this is one here. And again, um, this little zone checking. How do I feel? You, for this person, he would put the color in the zone. Um, it's just a way of exploring emotions and he has a personal toolkit of things that he likes doing that help to self-regulate him and it's not rocket science um but it's it, 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 it's quite it's quite effective it's about empowering people and to know what's what's what 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 is going on um right let's have a look at so this is the green workbook so you're in the green zone on the board. These are some of the things you feel, calm, happy, so on. The things that maintain that state of mind, you're allowed to listen to music every so often when you've done things you need to do. You might be able to lounge around with your mates, listen to music, whatever it is that, 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 that rocks your boat, really. Um, but these strategies, these things you use have to be agreed with you. You have to agree them yourself as the individual to make them meaningful. Green zones, the place you want to be. Sometimes you might well find yourself in other places. Um, yellow zone, if you're more anxious, agitated, nervous. Um, and we need to think of ways of explaining these emotions to our young people, finding scenarios, sitting down, discussing it. There's lots of ways you can do it. But then importantly, the strategies that recognize that emotional state and give that young person things that they have agreed will work for them. So that might be going outside for a walk around the, the, uh, the perimeters of the schoolyards or whatever. It might be bouncing on a ball, bouncing on a trampoline, going on the swing. Um, a change of activity, again, these strategies there. And this, this has to be available for the young person to access. So they are making decisions for themselves. So again, the tactics in the yellow zone are about getting back to the green zone. Um, the blue zone. Feeling a bit anxious, tired, lethargic. It might be physical activities is needed at this, this point. Again, it kind of depends on who you are, but this gives you some idea of what it looks like. It doesn't have to be massive, big um, things to do. It can, be, it can be little things. It can be a change of environment, a change of position, getting off your seat and walking about, any, anything. Um, if it works, 
if it avoids you moving up through the colours towards um, yellow and, and red, I think it's a good strategy. Um, and I have seen it in practice in lots of places. It's a very effective strategy. Simple, effective. Um, obviously, the place you don't want to be, but from time to time, these things do happen. Red zone, this is when you're losing the plot a bit more. You might be breaking things, chucking things, you know, hitting whatever. Um, and this is just part of a toolkit. This is one thing. At this, at this point, you know, you don't want to get here. You want to do all the work before when a child's moving towards yellow zone. That's when the strategies are put in place to head them off from getting to the red zone. Um, but if you're in there, there are things you can do. So rather than sit in a class session and, you know, the inevitable is going to happen. Well, let's just let's just go and have, go on the swing. Let's go on the, uh, the roundabout. Let's go on the bikes. Let's do something different. Let's help you self-regulate because without that, nothing else is good, positive is going to happen. So this is the most important bit of key learning that, that young person needs to do. Um, and that, 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 you know, that can't be overemphasized too much. Um, sensory issues, again, these are more on the timetable than they used to be. Um, I've got an example just of a little sensory toolkit here. Um, this is personal to one young person. Again, we sometimes, there's a different, can be a difference between chronological and cognitive age. Some kids can find it really difficult to sit in groups. Sit on chairs can be difficult. Now, whether, whether that's for a length of time or not. So it's recognizing that we need to move around. It's a human characteristic that we need to be able to move around, um, to be able to use physical movement and exercise to relieve pressure, to relieve tension, to decrease anxiety, to keep us in a positive green zone area. And this is just, again, an accessible toolkit that youngsters are, are, are helped to understand to recognize when those feelings they're experiencing, this is what they go to, this is what they use, and it heads off them moving uh, up through the colors um, into a more difficult area. Um, what else was it on sensory? I think that'll do on that one. Oh yeah, there were just these things, um, lanyards, and they just, Again, this is a school-based system, but it doesn't have to be. But if somebody's using a sensory break, it gives an importance to this activity. I might not be in class. I might be, you know, out and about in the, in the building, safely doing something different. But, you know, I'm on official business, as it were. This is a recognised strategy that works for me. Don't diminish it. Um, this is real learning um, because it is helping me to understand and self-manage and self-regulate my emotions. Again, without this learning, this understanding, not a lot else is going to take place. So, um, sensory overload, um, sensory underload, can be linked to taste, touch, smell, noise, whatever. We need to understand and recognize that and build in strategies that enable young people to, to move away from situations and help self-regulate. And the importance of space, the importance of positioning, the importance of movement, the importance of change of activities, the importance of choice, the importance of ownership, all these are vital components um, in supporting our young people. Um, top tips, are, you know, it's a grand title, but you know, if somebody is in a red zone, it can be it can be a stressful situation for everybody. So, so what 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 sort of things can we do? Well. If we think about supporting people, if we think about non-verbal communication, and you'll get different figures for this, I'm going to go with 85% of communication is non-verbal. So it's not what we say, it's how we say it, intonation, pace, volume, and so on. That's the verbal stuff, but it's the non-verbal communication that's so important. So if a young person is in a difficult place, um, a very supportive thing we can do is to cut the language. Keep it really simple, really slow, really calm, um, to cut the eye contact. It's less threatening, make it in, in, in intermittent eye contact. Don't, don't stare, don't focus too much, don't put them first under pressure. Give people space, uh, move away. Um, think of your, your, your body posture, you need to look relaxed and calm, um, but in control in, and positive. Um, you might not feel that inside, but you need to portray those um, that emotions on the outside of your nonverbal uh, body language. You need to give the person time to process, 
Um, don't take it personally. It's not intended uh, as a personal to, to you. It's an emotional outpouring, an emotional outburst. That person needs support at, at that particular time. And going back to zones of regulation, they provide a an effective toolkit to help young people um, evaluate and to, to to understand and to plan things they can do to avoid getting into red zone type behaviours. Um, so that was as I had a quick whistle top uh, tour. Um, I am quite happy to talk more about this to answer any questions or um, massive disagreements you might have. If you do have those, so any questions or so on, you know, go through great minds together um, and I'll try and come back to you. Okay.